We're ready to go. Good morning and welcome. It's a big day. Long time coming. I would like to thank our special guests here today, uh, the mayor, obviously, and our deputy secretary, Ms. Coloretti, our congressman, Mike Capuano, Jay Ash, the secretary of housing and economic development for the city, and certainly, last but not least, and in fact, most importantly, our resident representatives, Dolly Battle and Stephanie Thomas. Yes. And we have a huge contingent, contingent of Whittier Street residents right up here up front. They've waited a long time for this day. So I am absolutely delighted. It'll be impossible to get the smile off my face this morning. Although I am battling a cold, so I'm going to try to avoid my usual handshakes and hugs to the extent that I can so that I'm not passing it on. But I would have to have one foot in the grave to miss today's event, so I am certainly here. So without any further ado, let's start the program. I am delighted uh, to introduce uh, for her announcement uh, the Secretary, Deputy Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. We were blessed to have the Secretary here as recently as a week ago to announce the smoke-free housing uh, policies and regulations for public housing throughout the city, something that I am extremely proud that the Boston Housing Authority was on the cutting edge for, and we implemented that four or five years ago. So we've been blessed with two special guests with, for two very important events in over a week. Please a warm welcome for Nani Coloretti, the Deputy Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Thank you, Bill McGonigal, for that kind introduction and for all of your hard work. I have a few thank yous to run through, so bear with me. I uh, just want to give a shout out to Mayor Marty Walsh, Secretary A. Secretary Ash and the folks from city and state government for all your support in making today possible. And also Congressman Capuano, thank you for your great service. Thank you for your great service on behalf of this community. Um, there are a few other partners on this project I just want to give a shout out to. Aaron Gordenstein, Jean Pinano, Elizabeth Babcock. I don't know if you guys are here, but you should wave your hands in the back up here. And all our incredible partners, incredible partners on this project. Uh, and of course, Stephanie Thomas and Dolly Battle, who are representing up here. everyone from Whittier Street Apartments for your leadership in this community and for hosting us today. I'm proud to announce today that after four years since you got a planning grant, the community of Whittier is being awarded a $30 million yes! grant. Yes! Any more speeches now we're done. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, this is part of HUD's uh, choice uh, neighborhood initiative, and you did get a planning grant four years ago in 2012. But Dolly Battle reminded me she's been doing this work for 40 years, so this is a big deal. This is one of the last grants we are getting out under the door in the Obama administration, so we're really proud to be doing this. And you guys should be really proud you got it. Thirty-four communities applied for this grant, and only five got it. And also, you all tried to get one last round and did not make it, but did listen to what the comments were, and you were successful. So you should be really proud of your work on this. It's really amazing. <laughs> so 
So at HUD, we know that a good home is more than just four walls and a roof. It's really about the institutions that surround it. Our neighborhoods need thriving businesses that boost the local economy. We need quality schools that allow our children to reach their full potential. And we need healthcare centers that contribute to the happiness and well-being of communities. And here at Whittier, they will use the new implementation grant to transform your own homegrown vision for the big picture development and make that into a reality. So just a couple of details about it before more people come up here and talk. Uh, it's gonna be about 500 units. So there'll be affordable and mixed income housing and it'll help support the Whittier Street Health Cl Clinic as well. We think this will jumpstart the local economy and make it easier for entrepreneurs to receive game-changing loans and making Ruggle Street and the surrounding area here more dynamic and more dynamic space to attract new businesses. Our choice grants have already attracted more than $170 million in this community alone, in additional public and private investment and commitments to help, a number that should only increase in the coming years. So I really want to congratulate the local leaders here in Whittier and in the four other communities around the nation receiving a choice neighborhood grant today. And I look forward to seeing how you'll use this grant to spark progress for everyone who calls Whittier home. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Now that's what we call a Boston welcome. <laughs> Our next speaker. Uh, I am delighted to uh, introduce someone that I have been extremely proud uh, to serve as his administrator of the Boston Housing Authority for the past three years. Someone that has put his money where his mouth is when it comes to public housing. Someone that I talk to on a regular basis and I'm aware of his commitment to ensuring that the public housing communities in this city thrive and prosper. And it's someone that is very committed to making sure that our residents at Whittier Street and residents throughout the city and our public housing live in decent, safe, and sanitary housing. Warm welcome, warm Whittier Street welcome for our Mayor, Mayor Marty Walsh. Thank you. Go get up. Thank you. Thank you. I want to just first of all thank Nani and, and the whole staff at HUD, um, Secretary Castro, uh, the incredible people that came to Boston twice to sit down w with Whittier Street with all of us to talk about the proposal and thank you for, for being persistent and thank you for what you've done for this country. Uh, certainly HUD and I know Secretary Castro, former mayor of San Antonio, uh, really is, was committed and is committed to doing the right thing for people in our country. And I want to thank HUD for their investment over the last eight years in the United States of America. <laughs> I want to thank Secretary Ash as well. Uh, before Secretary Ash was the secretary, he was uh, the city manager in Chelsea, and he understands the transformative nature of, 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 of this award today. Uh, and he did a lot of that when he was in Chelsea. Congressman Capuano, um, he's our champion. Uh, Mike Capuano uh, fights for working class people every single day of his life. He's down in D.C. and I know he doesn't need to hear this, but we're going to need him now more than ever in D.C. as we move forward. Thank you, Michael. Uh, State Representative Byron Rushing, thank you, Byron, uh, for always being a champion and for being part of this grant. I want to, uh, I want to thank Billy McGonigal and his staff. Um, Billy McGonigal uh, is somebody who, um, I don't know what the right words to say about him are. Um, <laughs> back when I was a state representative, uh, I represented a building in Dorchester called Inglewood. Uh, Inglewood was a senior development run by the Boston Housing Authority. Uh, and there was a woman that lived in there that was talking to me about some problems with the BHA. And she said, we got to get Billy on the phone. <laughs> and I knew who Billy McGonigal was. Uh, I had met him a couple times. This was nearly 20 years ago. But I realized real quickly when I got Billy on the phone, his commitment and his love 
for all the people that live in the Boston Housing Authority. And I've watched him over the years. I had the chance to watch him create a, a building trades program uh, with the building trades myself and Billy, and he insisted that the program come through the project labor agreement. By the way, that President Obama put in uh, legislation to redevelop the old colony housing development. I've had the great honor of working with Billy now for the last three years, and persistent is probably a word I can use for him. He is probably more excited than anyone in this tent today because he understands the transformative nature of this $30 million award to Whittier Street. So, Billy, on behalf of all of us here in the city of Boston, thank you very much for your great work. to the residents, to Dolly, to Stephanie, to all of the residents here. You deserve this. You deserve this. I know there's been some talk over the last couple of days about, about I'm not going to really get into too much about something going out. You deserve this. Yep. Roxbury deserves $30 million from the federal government. And we need to continue to push for good development for Roxbury. We need to continue to make sure we create more affordable homes. We need to continue to make sure that your kids that grow up in this neighborhood can live in this neighborhood and want to live in this neighborhood. We got to continue to do that. We got to continue to move forward. And that's what we're trying to do in the city. John Barros is here and Brian Golden's here from the Boston Planning and Development Agency and John Barros from Economic Development. When General Electric came to the city, John Barros put them in a car along with Jay and they drove through Roxbury because we need to make sure, let people know, let businesses know that Roxbury is a real option. We need people to start coming to this com community. We need to start developing our neighborhoods. This award, this grant is going to have a huge impact on the Whittier Street community. It's going to have a huge impact, not just in Roxbury, but in the entire community in our city in Boston. As was said, this is the second grant we received, the first under my administration. And I remember when the first one was awarded on Quincy Street, I was invited uh, by then the mayor to, to Mayor Menino to come to that, grant, that, that presentation because I represent the district right next door and I watched, I've watched what that grant has done for the Quincy Street Corridor. I've watched businesses start to come into the neighborhood. I've watched some areas of, of, of startup spaces that are happening in the Quincy Street area because of that grant. The same thing is going to happen here. The potential, we know what the potential is. We don't have to think of what the potential is, but we know. We have a transit line down the street. We have an innovation center at the, at the Bowling Building. We have new developments up and down, coming up and down the corridor. We're working like never before with the state delegation to make sure that we continue to bring new investments into the community. In the past, we talk about we have a police station across the street. We do. But we have to talk more than having a police station across the street. We have to talk about actually we're bringing innovation to the community. As was mentioned, we're going to have new units of housing and adding additional units of housing. We're going to be connecting people to more open space. We're going to be connecting people to Wi-Fi expansion, which means we can bring good jobs and more education. We're building a brand new school across the, down the street, the Dearborn School, STEM Academy, the first STEM Academy in the city of Boston's history, the first high school that we're building in I don't know how long in the city of Boston, right down the street. We're here to lift low-income families up, not push them out. That's the, what we're going to be doing. I have the chance on Wednesday, I was just in the car, I, I got invited to the White House on Wednesday to go down to an event with the President about My Brother's Keeper, which is one of his initiatives that he started. And when the President started that initiative, I told him that we will be the best city in America with My Brother's Keeper. And that's our intention. Not too long ago, the President was on ESPN, and he was talking about his legacy. And he was talking about 
a lot of different things about what he wants to do when, when, he, when, he, when he's not in the office anymore. But he talked about my brother's keeper. And he said this program was created to uplift black and brown boys. Because when you look at the numbers of education, black and brown boys, the numbers are under performance. When you look at incarceration, the numbers are high. When you look at uh, job opportunities, the numbers are low. And he said, we want to change that. And that was the intention of my brother's keeper. And when he was on ESPN the other night, um, he was talking about my brother's keeper. And he said, you know, he said, he explained what the program was. And he said, you know, you got to look to Boston, what Boston is doing. That's what he talked about on ESPN. And there was a young man in the audience from Boston, Devin, who is a, who's a young man that works in City Hall now. Um, and, and he talked about the great pieces of what he's doing in Boston. The reason why I'm saying this to you on Wednesday, um, they're having the last My Brother's Keeper event, and I got invited to the White House, and I'm going to go down there, and I think about, I'm listening to all the rhetoric about what's happening now in, in, in this new Washington that we're experiencing, but there are certain things that we can do here in our city to continue the legacy of the president. The first thing I'm going to say to the president when I see him Wednesday, and I will have a chance to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to say from all the folks at Whittier, I'm going to say they want to say thank you and give him a big hug for the $30 million. And I'm also going to let him know, I'm also going to let him know that his presidency made a difference and made a difference for a lot of people. And that's what, that's what we can't forget. And I'm also going to tell him the last thing that we're going to do in our city is we're going to continue to build in his legacy. No matter what they try to take apart, what he created, we're going to continue to build here in the city of Boston and take it across the United States of America. I want to thank you all for being here today. This is, this is one of the best announcements I have ever made in my political life. Thank you. Uh, before I introduce our next speaker, I'd like to recognize a few folks. Uh, Joe Feaster, a friend of mine and former administrator of the Boston Housing Authority, former head of the NAACP in Boston. My dear friend Joe, thank you for coming. Uh, I'd also like to, Roger Brown from uh, POA. Our partners, Gene Panato, certainly, from uh, the Madison Park. Aaron Gornstein, obviously, from POA. And my dear friend and partner in the housing business in Boston, Sheila Dillon. Please a warm welcome to Sheila. Uh, as the mayor said, our next speaker has been someone that has, for many years, been a aggressive advocate, spokesperson for poor and working families, a real champion uh, for public housing in the uh, appropriations subcommittee down there. Uh, he approaches his work with a great deal of passion uh, and commitment, and I am uh, delighted that he's here today, and I'm delighted uh, that he is representing uh, in Congress the residents of Whittier Street and other public housing developments in the city of Boston. Please a warm welcome for Congressman Mike Capuano. Thank you. First of all, I'd I think it's important to recognize what this is. This is not some faceless group of people 500 miles away in Washington awarding money to people they don't know. This is your tax dollars coming home to do the kinds of things you wanted them to do. So I appreciate the thanks, but the truth is this is your money being reinvested in your community to make your lives better. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? <laughs> and let's know where this money is going to go. Most of this money, almost every penny of this money, will actually go to the private sector to hire people in the construction business, in the private construction business, to create something better for this society. So this is not some big government 
sham. We were hiring our brother-in-laws to do all these kinds of things. This is the American society saying that our people deserve good, decent, affordable housing. And when the mayor says you deserve it, let's think about all the years where everybody forgot about you. They forgot about housing. They built this place and walked away. Not just here, but one after another after another. Built highways, tore down housing in this neighborhood to build highways that never got built. And forgot about it. This is finally a full circle coming back around. So I'm happy to be part of the last thing. I'd be honest with you, I spent the last two months pushing every single administrator in Washington to get every piece of paper they can off of their desk before January 20th. <laughs> the, the good thing is most of them agree and they're trying to do everything they can to do it. Now I want to talk a little bit about the future because honestly, if this is all I ever do, it's great, but it's not enough. Everybody here knows other things we can and should be doing. Other housing things, other transportation things, other environmental things. Take a look around this neighborhood. There's a lot of work we could do to improve the local environment. All of that takes money. All of that takes tax money. Now we're coming into an era that a lot of people, in my district in particular, are concerned about what's in the future. And they ask me, what can we do? And here's the truth, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know what administration we're gonna get. I don't know what their policies are gonna get. I pay t close attention to this election. And the truth is, I don't know which Donald Trump we're gonna get. <laughs> and if you do, God bless you, please tell me. All that being said, I enter this era, I'm trying to keep my hope up. I'm trying to hope that my fears don't come to fruition. And I want to work with people that may see the world a little differently. And I hope some of my fears are wrong. And if they are, I'll celebrate it. But if they're not, and those fears do come to fruition. Now let's back up a little bit. It wasn't long ago we had a Hope 6 program in this country. Hope 6 is what rebuilt Mission Maine, not far from here, and many, many other projects. They killed it. It wasn't long ago we had a rural housing program. It's not just people in the cities who need government help. People in some of our rural areas in this country, which of course, to me, rural is two tomato plants on the back porch. <laughs> But in the rural areas, they're just as struggling as some of them, are just struggling just as hard as we are. I support not just city things. I want all Americans, including those who live in the middle of nowhere, to have decent, affordable housing. They killed the rural housing program. And the people who did it come from those rural areas. And they got away with it. You know why they got away with it? Because people like us didn't scream. We gave up. We walked away. Now I enter this era with hope. I really do. Not unrealistic hope, oh, everything's fine, let's just skip down the street. But hope in the good humanity of mankind. Trying to find the goodness in everybody. But if they fail us, I'm not gonna blame them. They told us what they were going to do. It shouldn't be a secret. Now, maybe I misheard them, and I hope I did. But if I didn't, it's on us, the American people, to stand up, scream, and turn it around. That's what elections are all about. And for those of you who just want to sit on the porch and complain, good luck to you. Those are the people that don't deserve our help. For those of you who ever got anything for doing nothing, I don't know how you did it. Life is a struggle. 
everything is a fight. And when somebody wants to take something away from you, and in this case, it would be, in my opinion, the hopes and dreams of America for an equal society, a fair society, for a society that treats us all the same and allows us to rise as high as we can without picking winners and losers, we don't sit here and celebrate $30 million. That's a drop in the bucket to some of the taxpayers we have in this country. Now, I don't have any problem with that, but I have a problem when they complain about it. You make me a billionaire, I will give you $30 million. <laughs> you know. And I'll say thank you. So if our fears come to fruition, and I say that by no word of celebration, but I don't want this to be the last celebration I'm at. If our fears come to fruition, I'm calling on each and every person in this tent who thinks this is a good idea to stand tall, not just today, not just tomorrow, but for the next four years, eight years, 12 years, as long as you live. It's not just about you. It's not just about me. It's about the next generation and the next generation and the next generation that we want to have a better life than we had. No going back, only going forward. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, before introducing our next speaker, uh, Joe Feaster and I were talking with uh, Secretary Ash a few moments before we started. Uh, about 20 years ago, when uh, Joe was the administrator of the Boston Housing Authority, I was the deputy administrator. We were at an event at Mission Hill with then Secretary Cisneros. Uh, Mission Hill was the first recipient of a Hope Six grant in uh, Boston. And we had an application in for a Hope Six grant. <laughs> Joe's laughing because it is funny, uh, for Orchard Park at the time. And we said to the secretary, are you going to be around a couple of hours tonight? Why don't you come with Joe and I and we'll show you around Orchard Park. We've got a Hope Six grant down there and we're doing a little lobbying, obviously. We went into the Orchard Park uh, Community Center and there's a basketball court. And Joe and I did a little two-on-two -two basketball with the secretary and one of his aides. And we let him win. <laughs> and we got the grant. So with, true story. <laughs> so without any further ado, uh, let me introduce uh, who's representing himself and the governor, who have been wonderful, wonderful partners in this effort and in the Orion Heights uh, uh, public housing development where we had a groundbreaking last week. Uh, we're lucky to have a Secretary of Housing and Economic Development that gets this stuff. Please warm welcome for Secretary Jay Ash. Bill and Joe, I want you to know that the governor and I are ready for the two-on-two. -two. I think we're on guns. I, I think we'll be okay. Well, <laughs> well, it's great to be here on behalf of Governor Baker to congratulate everyone who's had a little bit to do with this uh, great day. Um, I agree with Mayor Walsh. What a great announcement. This is a great day. This is a great way to start our week and a great way to celebrate a uh, great partnership that we've had over the years with HUD. Um, so on behalf of Governor Baker, uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, Secretary uh, Crystal Cornegay, who uh, runs the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, I want to thank HUD uh, for the relationship that we've had. I'm a former mayor. I'm a former municipal official. I'm actually a former uh, affordable housing resident myself. And I know that without the federal government, without HUD's um, intercession and real um, championship of all of us, uh, we wouldn't be where we are. And we have uh, a lot to look forward to uh, thanks to your great work. So thank you, Nani, and everyone else at HUD. So talking about teamwork, what you should know is that uh, the mayor and uh, Bill uh, told the governor that this was a priority for them, and that meant that it was a priority for all of us as well. 
Uh, so when the mayor speaks to the governor, uh, the governor listens and uh, tries to deliver as much as we can uh, to support Boston's agenda. Uh, we are uh, all in when it comes to uh, affordable housing, uh, doing so much around the state and are grateful to be uh, part of the partnership here that's delivering such an important uh, program, not only for the city of Boston, but for all the residents who have been waiting, in some cases, decades to see this happen. Um, we will continue to support this project. Uh, we're pleased to, uh, to let everyone know that uh, the governor is uh, putting aside uh, state funds and federal pass-through funds that come through Mike Capuano's uh, great work uh, to make sure that every need that uh, is, uh, is here uh, will be settled. And uh, Bill, you'll know that uh, with or without a, uh, a winning basketball game, uh, <laughs> we want to be supportive of everything you do. There are many partners uh, here in the room uh, who have been involved in housing. Uh, Aaron, uh, I want to recognize Aaron Gordon who not only uh, leads POA here, but is also a former director of housing and community development. Aaron's leadership has uh, been felt on the state level and throughout uh, affordable housing circles, not only here in Massachusetts and throughout. So, Aaron, thank you for your good work, and I'm glad to see you're being rewarded here. And, and uh, Jean Panato uh, from uh, Mission Park, uh, thank you so much uh, for everything you do, and uh, your good work on community development uh, gets us excited about uh, our work as well. Just two others I want to recognize. Uh, Joe Flatley is in the back of the room from um, MHIC and uh, Tim Sullivan over here from Mass Housing. For all of you in the room, what you should know is that there are a really, there's a really strong partnership amongst leaders on the state, on the federal, and on the local level that get to work with great nonprofit leadership. And uh, we're so excited uh, to see this happen and so many other projects like this happen. So we'll continue to be at it. You should all continue to be at it. And together, we'll enjoy better days ahead. So thank you, everyone. Joe, I think we'd be outgunned. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I don't know if I want to take him up on it. We'll need. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Right. We'll need stilts. I think. So. Uh, before I introduce uh, the most important speakers uh, in the room, as the mayor and I are fond of saying, our residents from Whittier Street, I do want to recognize a few other folks. Uh, Kate Bennett has put her heart and soul into this grant for three years. As I'm fond of saying, she's the brains of the outfit, and that, uh, that is absolutely true. Uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, some of our HUD colleagues. Uh, uh, Jim Reed, the regional administrator, is here. There's Jim right there, by gosh. Uh, <laughs> in addition to being the regional administrator, Jim is a, an alumni of the Boston Housing Authority as well. And Marilyn also, and he plays basketball, all right. <laughs> Maybe, fair, fair enough. And Marilyn O'Sullivan, the head of the public and Indian housing in the region, and also a former BHA employee. So thank to them, to the regional folks as well, for their uh, cooperation and help uh, with this important effort. So uh, without any further ado, uh, the folks that are uh, representing uh, aggressively representing, appropriately representing the residents of Whittier Street, uh, two folks that we would not have been able to pull this exciting grant together without their active assistance and support, please. I'd like to bring them both up to say a few words, please. Dolly Battle and Stephanie Thomas. <laughs> Dolly, Stephanie, come on. Come on, girl. Come on. You've never been shy before now. Come on. Both of you say both of you say a few words. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go first. Go ahead, Dolly. Go you ahead. go first, Dolly. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm what sure, a team, huh? I'm sure everybody can understand today there's so much shock for me that I'm not gonna have many words to I I still have to think about what happened. I'm not sure I'm up with it yet. 
But I remember when people used to tell me that you're wasting your time. But 40 years I continued because I, I believed that I could get something done and make that difference, and I did. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank God for waking us all up this morning and bringing us out here. Amen. Without him, I know he could, I, without the Lord, it wouldn't have been possible. Amen. I like to um, say this, that uh, I'm going to admit that um, I lived in this development since 1954, so I'm a very old, old timer. And I really admit the fact that it was bothering me that we're going to tear us down. But I stand to realize and I understand we do need a change. And I'm so glad in my heart that now we're going to break the barrier. Things are going to be going forward. Things are going to be happening not just about us but the children and the, the, the single moms, the dads. Um, Everybody who's a part of whoever's a part of what. But another thing, too, I have to mention P3, too, because P3, they're a wonderful team, too, and I'm praying in our favor. We're going to win, okay? We're going to win this, okay? You're going to be a part of us, and we're going to be a part of you. Uh, that ends the program. Okay, let's get it done. Thank you for coming.